And I remember that the black law students had organized an orientation for the first year students. And one of the persons who spoke at that orientation was Professor Bell. And I remember him sauntering up to the front and not giving us a lecture, but engaging us in a conversation and speaking the truth and telling us that he has to learn at this place that I've car carried with me ever since. Now, how did this one man do all this? How's he accomplished all this? He hasn't done it simply by his good looks and easy charm. <laughs> Although he has both in ample measure. <laughs> he hasn't done it simply because of the excellence of his scholarship. Although his scholarship has opened up new vistas and new horizons and changed the standards of what legal writing is about. Open up your hearts and your minds to the words of Professor Derek Bell. It may be significant that the student stands here and delivers a mighty address without notes. Wow, the teacher! <laughs> There's only one correction. I appreciate your applause. I appreciate Barack's kind words. But it was not me that made all of this possible. I want you to understand that while I have been here for two decades, I have not forgotten that my appointment represented the culmination of years of student struggle. I remember as well that for the first 150 years of its history, the faculty at Harvard Law, the oldest existing, most prestigious, and in the view of many, the best law school in the United States, was all white and all male. That is a horrible history, not remediable by plaintive pleas of mea culpa, combined with the token appointment of members of the victim class who are least likely to remind the school of its past racist hiring record.